Well, hello, fellow Catholics out there in Rumble land and YouTube. And by the way, please click on the plus sign if you happen to be watching on Rumble. Subscribe to the channel. Please do the same on YouTube. Okay, so I was thinking we would tackle the sacrament of baptism next in this simple series on the sacraments. But I had something happen to me this past week uh, that caused me to change my mind. And actually, I shouldn't say something that happened to me because it actually happened to someone else, someone very dear and important to me, my father. And so I guess I should say something that affected me, right? Not necessarily something that happened to me, but anyway. My father has not been doing well for a while. You know, he was diagnosed with diabetes about a year ago. But the uh, strange thing was he suddenly started losing weight, right? So, you know, the whole family, we were like, uh, you know, this is strange. Uh, does diabetes cause you to lose weight, you know? Anyway, long story short, I saw him last October for his birthday, and he really didn't look good, you know, to me. He looked weak. He looked skinny, gaunt, you know, and it was uh, a little alarming, right? But flash forward, this past weekend, I get a call from my brother in Connecticut saying he's driving up to New York and he's going to take our pops to the hospital. He's really not doing well. So, fast forward again. He winds up in the hospital. You know, it's pretty serious. They think he has a tear in his aorta. And they also found a mass in his pancreas. Which has most likely caused the dramatic weight loss, right? And so, they told us the next 72 hours at that point... We're going to be very pivotal. So now, flash backward a couple of months. As soon as uh, things started looking strange for my pops, you know, I started asking my guardian angel, you know, if worse comes to worse, I pray that you please make it possible for me to be by his side so that I can find him a priest, convince him to go to confession because... I don't think my pops has ever been to confession and have a priest administer the sacrament of the sick. You know, this was my prayer to my guardian angel. Pretty big ask, considering I live in Kentucky. I've been here for the past 30 years now, and my father is all the way in New York, right? How am I going to get to his bedside in time? But guess what? Somehow, my guardian angel pulled it off, right? He made it all possible. I was able to speak to my father's nurse at the hospital when we got to New York. You know, we immediately got in our car and drove up there, right? But anyway, his nurse was somehow able to find a priest, you know, at the drop of a dime, right? And it didn't take any convincing at all, really, to get my father to confess his sins, right? And uh, get this, uh, the priest had not only me, but me along with my mother, right? This is a miracle in itself. He had me and my mother join in on the responses when he administered the sacrament of the sick. You know, just... An incredible, over-the-top moment, right? <laughs> I will never forget what my guardian angel did for my family. You know, the blessing, the graces, just unbelievable. But anyway, my pops is still alive, right? He is alive still. He actually sounds stronger what they thought was a tear, actually turned out to be an ulcer, 
uh, you know, a pretty bad ulcer, it seems. You know, it's the type of ulcer that could turn into a tear if they don't watch over it and, you know, control it with medicine, right? But the mass in his pancreas is still there. Uh, there's been some complications keeping doctors from going in and doing a biopsy so they can figure out what sort of treatment is required in his given situation. So I ask you, uh, I ask you to please pray for my pops, Ephraim Cortez. I have his name, firstborn son right here, right? Ephraim Cortez, your humble uh, first responder Catholic here. But anyway, I found it appropriate, given all of this, to talk a little bit about the sacrament of the sick this week. Now, the sacrament of the sick is obviously a sacrament of healing, right? We see this in the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 6, verse 13, where we find the following in reference to the apostles. Mark tells us, he says, they drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Right? We also have James 5.14, which states, Is anyone among you sick? He should summon the presbyters, the priests of the church, and they should pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And so we have clear-cut evidence in these scripture passages for the sacrament of the sick. And the fact, excuse me, and the fact that it is a healing sacrament. But uh, not only is it a, a healing sacrament, but that you know, and uh, this is, you know, like way awesome, right? I mean, it's completely awesome. Did you know that through the sacrament of the sick, your sins can also be forgiven? And not just your sin, but your mortal sin, right? We've already seen, right, in, in James 5.14, as we just looked at, verse 5.14, uh, is anyone among you sick? He should summon the presbyters of the church, and they should pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, right? This proves the sacrament of the sick is a... Is a, a thing, right? Because we see James, an apostle of Christ, not only giving witness to it, but actually giving instruction on how to apply the sacrament, how to go about administering the sacrament. But James, you know, he doesn't stop there. He continues and says in verse 15, he says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed any sins, he will be forgiven, right? If he has committed any sins, he will be forgiven. He will be, not he might be, you know, it depends on this or that. He will be forgiven. And so, this sacrament is truly powerful, and I had the great privilege of witnessing its power firsthand at the bedside of my father. You know, minutes after re receiving the sacrament of the sick, uh, as sick as he was and still is, let's not get it twisted, right? Uh, he still is sick, but uh, minutes after the sacrament, my father appeared more energetic, right? A bit more animated. And even now, I just talked to him a couple of days ago, and his voice is so much stronger, you know? He sounds like the old him, in spite of a setback he had, which, you know, I won't go into, but, you know, just keep him in your prayers. You know, the situation is still very serious, but the powerful uh, 
sacrament, you know, just so powerful. Uh, this sacrament that, you know, I could feel its graces, even though the sacrament was not intended for me, you know. I could feel its graces as I joined in the responses with my mother, right? Uh, a feeling of complete freedom rushed through me. Like, you know, a heavy burden had been lifted off my shoulders. Like, you know, I, I was floating. Like, you know, my heart was immersed in complete joy and complete happiness in spite of the grim situation we all found ourselves in, right? Especially my pops, right? It was uh, truly incredible. So, uh, what else can I say? You know, there you have it. A sacrament of healing, a sacrament of restoration, a sacrament of forgiveness. It's done wonders in my father's life. Hopefully it'll continue to do incredible wonders and miracles in his life. It's done wonders in my life, right? And I wasn't even the recipient of the uh, sacrament, right? It's done wonders in my mother's life, right? Whether she realizes it or not, right? And it will do wonders in your life, in your relatives' lives, right? Uh, you know, a relative that might be at his, you know, end, right? It'll do wonders for him, for her. Uh, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. It will, okay? So, God bless, and please keep my father in your prayers. See you next time. God bless.